Welcome back. This weekend, continuing on with the toy hauler. Today, doing all the wiring, hopefully. Got a stack of gear here from the guys at Rotec Marine. Split coro tube to protect the wiring. 10 meters of seven core. Flat seven pin trailer plug. Some guides that are hopefully gonna work for the trailer handbrake cable. A heap of these grommets, so I can go through the frame without it chafing. Already had a douche plug kit. Probably the most superior kit on the market, I reckon. And then I've got the laminated wire handbrake cable and some of those little U-shaped clampy things, cable clamps. I'm gonna throw some plugs on this, run some wiring, punch through the chassis, run it along, connect it to the plug, wire up the handbrake, and then probably suss out any other little things I need. Then I need to go get a little compliance plate piece. And then we're into main roads for hopefully registration, if I don't fail. So yeah. So yeah, let's have a couple of beers and get into it. For the handbrake I've got, I think just enough of this laminated cable that came in the kit from, I think it was all from Swiftco trailers, where I got the axles and everything from. Got a couple of these stainless little guides. So hopefully I can drill and tap them inside the chassis and it'll just keep the, the slack of the cable up. Hopefully I don't need two on each side, because these were like $12 each or something. We'll see how we go. And I've got these little cable clamps. So you loop that through the lever on the back of the drum brake, double it over and clamp it. So should be pretty straightforward. Hardest bit's gonna be drilling tapping the hole to fit the guides, I think. So let's give it a crack. It's got this guy down here, a little pulley. Bolts onto the back of the handbrake there. Ran that through there, doubled it over. Hopefully all I've got to do is put one of these on, so I can drill and tap and mount it later. Put on first. Hopefully I can squash it a little bit, make it easier. That's it. That's right See how we go now. Got it. Pinches it down pretty good. I don't think that's coming off. Got heaps of cable left. There we go. I'm not going to do it up permanently just yet because I've got a bit of a dilemma. So this is definitely going to be a problem. I thought it was going to be. That's a handbrake cable here. That's about 300 mil until the bottom of the draw bar, which is under slung. The actual chassis rail is all the way up here, like 500 mil away from that. This is gonna get taken out by something. I can't route the cable up here to the edge of this because then it hits on the tire back here and rubs. So I've got to bring it in. I've got to bring it in and up like that. That'll be all right. In and up like that. I'm thinking I need a bit of flat bar or box between these two sections here, between the draw bar across here. Tack that in and then mount these up with those guides. At least then it's at the same height as the underneath the draw bar, so it should just slide over things. Hmm. Like I see what aluminium cutoffs I've got. Cut something to size and tack it in. Hopefully that should do it.
200 M4 and one welder, still going great. Done a heap of MIG welding with it, heaps of AC TIG obviously. Haven't done any DC TIG or stick with it, but we'll get to that eventually. Should be okay. Pulled it up way out of the way now. Still probably a small chance it could get caught on something, but I highly doubt it. It's tucked up out of the way. I do want to put some storage boxes in under here, so if it gets caught on something, there's a good chance that something else is gonna get dinged up under here anyway. We'll see how it goes. If I've got to tweak it, I've got to tweak it, but pretty confident that should do for now. Seems to be a bit of a storm rolling in here, so I'm probably gonna get wet in a second. Got this fill point that goes through the deck. You've probably seen it in a previous episode, but it goes at a 45 going down. I kind of needed to come in at a 90. Couldn't find one that does that. So what I'm gonna try and do is get my die grinder with a carbide burr, not with a flappy wheel. Try and cut this off, cut that 45 degree elbow off, and then either find an elbow or maybe even 3D print one to turn it into a 90. So let's see if I can do that without destroying it. I might try the pointy one, I guess. So I managed to cut that out of the elbow out of this one, ducked down to Bunnings, and just picked up a 50mm 90 degree elbow, so this does seem to sit a little bit better in there. I'm gonna glue this one on. A bit of priming fluid, bit of non-pressure pipe glue. Probably not the right stuff, but it'll do. It's pretty good with that little roller inside there. So just to clarify, and I said this in the previous videos, ages back about the water tanks. I don't drink this water. This is just for like showering and stuff and washing hands, so. I don't know if this is the right glue, but it doesn't matter. Like well, that. Clean up around here with some acetone so I can glue that down with some silicon and a couple of rivets. A little go like that. One rivet, two rivets, three rivets. It's not the easiest to clean through this diamond plate. I don't want to waste a whole tube of silicon, so you can get these little ones for like 10 bucks. And hopefully I can reseal it. I won't even use that. Just use straight out of the tube. In we go.
much about it is trim up this fill pipe. Take a guess. Snip, snip. <coughs> I think that'll do it. There's a slight little bend. Gotta get the breather out for underneath that one. Slight little bend going down, but the water will flow in there, alright? Should be fine. One eternity later. So you flash forward a couple of weeks, got the moustache going, so it's obviously November. I finished the handbrake and then I just went on a mad hustle to try and get everything done for registration. So I've been working on this thing for I think 12 months now. I've had a few breaks, just weekends doing other things, had that trip up to Cape, so that slowed it down a little bit. I think I really need to just hit this milestone, get it registered, and then that'll give me the motivation, crack on with the canopy and hit the home stretch. So I do want to get it registered, take it for a shakedown run, I want to throw some tight end points in the floor and then throw some buggies and quads on it and go for a bit of a camping mission just to test the trailer out itself. The reason I really need it registered is I need to transport this canopy frame down to the sheet metal company to get it all skinned. I'm not going to try and do that myself too hard and it'll just look like crap. But yeah, the shed's absolutely trash from all this work I've been doing. I think, like they say, the last 10% of the work takes 90% of the time, so it's taken me a heat. If you want sneak peeks of bits and pieces, jump over to our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I try to post there at least a couple times a week. And yeah, tune in next episode. We're going to head down to Queensland Transport, see whether they just straight up fail me or not. Um, and then I'll do a full video run through all the final things I did as well. So, wiring up the brakes, clearance lights, breakaway controller. I think I finished the safety chains, made mud flaps, number plate line, heaps of other things. So I'm not going to bore you with the details of installing all those, but we'll run through it and I'll show you where I'm at. And then we'll be registered and then ready to go on the first little mission. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next one. Hmm. I can see what aluminium cutoffs I've got. I think I just really need to hit this milestone, get it registered, and then uh, the main reason I need it registered is I need to get this canopy frame transported down to the sheet metal company. Uh, not sure 